This video contains references to some users who are still active online. Pseudonyms have been used to protect their privacy. October 27th, 2017. A Tumblr user named HIV Living makes one final post before logging off forever. The title? Important Confession. The text? Short, but devastating. I lied about my HIV status and all aspects of my identity, marital status, trafficking past, family, etc., on this blog, and I truly apologize. Even without any context, the implications of this post are terrifying. This person had spent months, if not years, lying about being HIV positive and a victim of human trafficking. What could possess someone to do this? How many people's trust had they betrayed with their elaborate ruse? To what end were they doing all of this? The confession raises a bevy of questions, and another user, Sidney Krukowski, replies with the two that are most pertinent. A. Why is this tagged Hamilton? B. What the f*** is going on? This is When Posting Goes Wrong. We are in the middle of an incredible epidemic. The epidemic is of AIDS. When a person has AIDS, the body becomes vulnerable to a range of cancers and infections which can be fatal. A cluster of strange pneumonia cases began to crop up in gay men. Then, a rare cancer. I have definitely been a victim of discrimination. HIV Living was a Tumblr blog that was devoted to discussing the history of the AIDS epidemic and AIDS activism, discoursing about media representation of HIV-positive people, general information and resources on living with HIV, and ACE discourse. If you haven't heard of ACE discourse, don't worry about it, it's not worth getting into. Since its creation in July 2016, the blog was regarded as being one of very few good pages on Tumblr to find information on HIV, until it was deleted in October 2017 following a callout post entitled, What Happened with HIV Living. But in order to understand what happened with HIV Living, we need to know a few things about the blog's main moderator, Isra, aka Tumblr user Blue Sky Sapphic, a 19-year-old HIV-positive Chinese-Pakistani bisexual non-binary person living in India. Because while Isra's blog hosted a lot of the same content as HIV Living, she was also deeply involved in one of Tumblr's most infamous, contentious, and overall unhinged fandoms. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton is a hip-hop musical that recounts the life of Alexander Hamilton and the founding myth of America with the founding fathers played by black and Hispanic actors. It debuted off-Broadway in February 2015 to rave reviews, sold-out theaters, and multiple awards, and continued its success on Broadway, where it enjoyed record-setting box office sales and national media attention. This attention allowed the hype around Hamilton to spread outside the Manhattan theater scene to the internet at large, and while Broadway is a notoriously exclusive medium with small numbers of tickets all selling for hundreds of dollars each, the release of a cast album on YouTube and Spotify in September 2015, and the large black market for bootleg recordings of Broadway shows, meant that the average broke theater kid could at least get the general idea of Hamilton for free. Interest among teenagers allowed Hamilton to accrue not just fans, but a fandom. In December 2015, Hamilton became the fifth most popular theater fandom on Archive of Our Own, and would rise to the second most popular by April 2016, behind only Do you hear the people sing? Isra was among the authors to get in on the Hamilton fandom when it was just starting to gain momentum. In November 2015, after purging her account of some Italia fix she had written a couple years earlier, Isra started publishing Hamilton fic under the username Illusionista. Isra found success with only her second fic in the fandom, To Scale the Blue Sky. A high school AU Lambs, that's the ship name for John Lawrence and Alexander Hamilton fic, set in 1988 against the backdrop of the AIDS crisis in which, among other things, Hamilton contracts HIV. Blue Sky was a hit. The fic racked up over 500 kudos in its first five months on the site, and appeared on numerous users' rec lists. Shortly after publishing the first chapter of Blue Sky on AO3, Isra started a Tumblr, originally posting under the username Angie Schuyler, a reference to Angelica Schuyler, Alexander Hamilton's sister-in-law. 
Tumblr hides follower counts, and archiving of this blog is sparse, so it's hard to say how large a following Isra had on the site, but one thing is for sure, Isra made a big splash on Tumblr when it came to stirring up trouble. Isra was one of several users at the center of a lesser-known drama, sometimes referred to as the Great Hamilton Dumpster Fire of 2016. Now, important disclaimer, most of the information on this drama has been lost because none of the relevant posts got all that many notes, uh, most of the ones that are still up have less than 40, and almost everyone involved has since deleted their blogs. The only info we have left is secondhand accounts from the anonymous fandom drama message board Fail Fandom Anon. That said, I will do my best with what I have, but be advised, a good amount of this is speculative. So, the Hamilton dumpster fire seems to have its origins with an established fanfic author who we shall call Lisa, who published a piece of Whamilton, that's Washington Hamilton, fic, between February and March 2016 that would end up becoming one of the most popular works in the whole fandom. Of course, the issue with having a very popular fic is that sometimes it can attract haters, and for some reason, the Hamilton fandom seems to have been overrun with them. In either late March or early April 2016, Lisa responded to a somewhat passive-aggressive Anon who was critical of her fic, and her response to this Anon drew the attention of a small group of lambs shippers who referred to themselves as the Group Chat of Color, or GCOC for short. And before you ask, yes, several people in this group were white. The GCOC began dogpiling Lisa to accuse her of things such as racism and pedophilia based on the content of her fix, accusations that would later be extended to a broader group of Whamilton shippers collectively referred to as the Wham Fam. What exactly is the content they were referring to? Well, the accusations included, amongst other things, 1. Pedophilia for shipping Washington and Hamilton, who, while both adults, have a 23-year age gap. Bonus problematic points on Lisa's fic for including a daddy kink. 2. Racism and racial fetishization for being white people writing real people smut fic about the black and Latino cast of Hamilton. 3. Racial fetishization for mentioning that a black character had a large penis. And 4. Sexualizing and or fetishizing children of color for writing a scene in which an adult person of color mentions having measured his penis when he was 15. Now, you could debate whether these allegations actually hold any water, but that isn't really important here. What is important to note is that the GCOC could get nasty. The attacks on the Wham Fam ranged from typical vague posting and direct callouts, all the way up to doxing and blackmail. The reason this is relevant to our story is that Isra was a member of the GCOC and one of the most prominent posters in this saga. Highlights of Isra's contributions to the discourse include criticizing Whamilton writers for being white adults, sexualizing children of color, accusing Lisa of fetishization in both her Hamilton fix and her Hamilton cast real people fix, despite admitting to having never read the RPFs, making a list of, quote, pedophiles and abusers fetishizing children of color, which was composed of users who had liked posts from a user who I think think is Lisa, who she had previously accused of fetishizing children of color, and as a side note, she had to take someone off the list of pedophiles after being informed that said user was 14 years old, calling someone misogynistic for writing a single dad AU, complaining about being put on a rec list with authors she disapproved of, and calling out a user for liking a problematic post and requesting that everyone unfollow her if they follow or interact with said user. If listening to this has you questioning the veracity and or intent of some of Isra's callouts, you're not alone. Multiple users posted criticism of Isra and the GCOC, the most important of which for our purposes was an NB named Ursula, posting on Tumblr as Digoxin Purpurea. Ursula was an active writer in the Hamilton fandom who was fandom friends with Lisa, even gifting her some Anderson Cooper x Chris Hayes RPF in October 2016. Ursula had caught wind of the GCOC's activities harassing other writers, and seeing as how some GCOC members, Isra included, went as far as demanding their targets recount sexual traumas as blackmail, they felt the need to put their foot down. Ursula threw their hat into this ring in June 2016 when they made a call-out post for Tumblr user Very Imposing, the first member of the GCOC to make public accusations against Lisa, and got in some good old-fashioned protracted internet arguments with other members of the GCOC in the aftermath. Thus, going into late 2016, we find ourselves in the following position. 
Isra was one of the leaders in a group that had routinely harassed, doxxed, and blackmailed fanfic authors over the content of their fics, specifically authors associated with Lisa. And Ursula, a fanfic author and friend of Lisa, had made a call-out post directed at one of Isra's close friends that drew the attention of others in her circle. This dynamic will be important to remember later. For now, let's come back to Isra. To bring this back to where we started, in the midst of all this, Isra had started HIV Living along with another blogger named Naj, posting on her main account as Allo Lesbian, and accrued a decent following. She had several original text posts that racked up over 2,000 notes each, numerous nons showering her with praise for her hard work spreading important info on HIV, and multiple people who reached out to her regarding their own HIV status looking for help. And on top of all of this, Isra's HIV-themed Hamilton fanfic, To Scale the Blue Sky, was still doing numbers, sitting at over 600 kudos by the end of 2016. In short, Isra was riding high, and her popularity would stretch on through most of 2017. There was just one small problem. Whisperings were circulating around the fandom. Rumors that Isra was not who she said she was. So who exactly did Isra say she was? Isra claimed she was originally from the westernmost edge of the Chinese province of Xinjiang on the border with Pakistan. She had been sold into sexual slavery by her parents as a young teen, which is how she had contracted HIV. She was then trafficked to a brothel in India, where she met another trafficking victim named Mukta. Isra and Mukta fell in love, ran away together, and got married, and were now living relatively happily together in Bangalore, where Isra attended university pursuing a degree in the sciences. Other anecdotes from her life included having her eye popped out of her socket when someone discovered her HIV status, getting pregnant by her trans femme wife and then miscarrying, and being raped and robbed at gunpoint. Now if this all sounds like… a lot, well, as one fail fandom anon user put it back in October 2016, quote, I've been in Hamilton fandom for about as long as it's been around, and I've seen OP just add more and more identities to her disprivilege checklist when she wants to win arguments. And I've definitely raised the point among friends that I think she's a pathological liar who isn't half the things she claims to be. So much of her references to her life don't add up. For instance, her claim to have been married to another woman for a full year when a couple months ago she was still making references to having a girlfriend who she only began calling a wife a few weeks ago. This isn't the first time I've seen her greatly exaggerate and straight up lie about other people's behavior, things that are quickly disprovable just by reading what the other person is saying. And while I don't think it's worth trying to go after her for the inconsistencies in her blogging, I do think it's pretty obvious that she has a very liberal relationship with the truth. This liberal relationship with the truth may have started some speculation as to if Isra might be a faker. Specifically, there was a rumor going around in the Hamilton fandom that Isra was actually an American college student. By summer of 2017, that speculation reached our good friend Ursula. Ursula sought out the source of the rumors and arrived at someone they described as a younger person who had been harassed by the GCOC in the past. This person really didn't want to incur the wrath of the GCOC again, and thus wasn't interested in making any kind of public callouts against Isra. Ursula decided to take it upon themselves to investigate this, since if Isra was lying about her location, she was probably lying about everything else, and the possibility that she was lying about having HIV while giving out advice on living with HIV, quote, totally, totally disgusted Ursula, who had lost a grandfather to complications from AIDS. Looking for potential signs of fraud, Ursula began tirelessly digging through Isra's blog, Blue Sky Sapphic, HIV Living, Naja's blog Allo Lesbian, as well as the blogs of Isra's other mutuals. Reading through some of Isra's personal stories, Ursula began to notice a large number of contradictions that would indicate Isra's life story was being made up as she went along. Examples include 1. Isra said her parents were rice farmers, but she also claimed to be from the western edge of Xinjiang province, a part of China which is too arid to support rice farms. 2. Isra said she was married to a Somali-American woman named Mukta, and the two lived in India. However, Mukta is an Indian name, not a Somali name, and at the time, gay marriage was not legal in India. 
three, Isra lived in India because she had been taken there after being sold into sexual slavery by her parents in China, and claimed to now attend university in Bangalore. However, India does not give asylum to sex trafficking victims, it deports them, so Isra would not have the documentation needed to attend an Indian university. 4. At this Indian university, Isra supposedly went abroad to do medical research at a clinic in the Gaza Strip, but due to her status as a Chinese-Pakistani HIV-positive Muslim living in India, there are numerous Israeli laws on the books that would have prevented her from getting a visa to visit Israel, and especially from visiting the Gaza Strip. Also, as previously mentioned, because she was in the country illegally, she wouldn't have been able to get a passport to do any of this in the first place. 5. Isra seemed to imply that her wife, who she met at a brothel in India after they had both been trafficked there, had been kidnapped from her American father, who was some kind of diplomat. However, an American diplomat's daughter being kidnapped in Somalia would have made international news, and there were no records of such an event occurring. 6. Isra only started mentioning her wife was trans after her followers questioned how she got pregnant, since HIV-positive women cannot receive in vitro fertilization. And these were just the tip of the iceberg. A couple months later, while digging through Isra's blog, Ursula found a link to a Cash.me account that Isra was using to take donations for her medical expenses. Not long ago, Ursula had moved from the US to Iceland for college, only to find their Cash.me account no longer worked because the service was only available in the States. Therefore, if Isra was using Cash.me, she had to be living in America. Having what looked like a smoking gun, Ursula messaged HIV Living with their concerns. Isra was apparently unavailable at the time, so they addressed their message to Naj. In this message, Ursula accused Isra of lying about her location. Ursula made it clear that they had no intention of doxing Isra, but that if Isra really was lying about who she was, that she delete her presence from HIV Living, apologize to all those she had lied to, and return any donations she may have gotten from the Cash.me link. About a week later, Ursula got her reply. Naj maintained that Isra was a real person, who was apparently in the midst of deleting her social media presence before moving back to China to live with her immediate family, who if you're keeping track of things were also the people who sold her into sexual slavery. Naj stated that Ursula's message did make her quote, question what she knew, and while she wasn't willing to give away any details in the interest of protecting Isra's privacy, she had quote, personally verified her situation and would be able to provide some documentation regarding the Cash.me account. Specifically, according to Naj, Isra had only received a single donation of $50 from a close friend. Ursula was unsatisfied with this answer. They replied to Naj via her main blog, pressing her on the inconsistencies in Isra's story and pointing out that international money transfers through Cash.me really don't make any sense. Ursula then asked straight up, is Isra HIV positive, quote, because if she isn't, she hurt many more people than I think either of us are aware of. Naj reasserted that Isra was HIV positive. Ursula asked if they could speak with Isra directly to avoid any confusion from speaking through a middleman. Naj said that it was around 2 a.m. in India, so Isra was probably asleep, but she could probably coordinate a Skype call when she woke up. Ursula replied, I highly doubt she's asleep, given that she just deleted her Tumblr. Naj, Isra, whoever you are, honey, please don't do this again. That's all I ask. Please don't do this. At this point, Ursula checked an IP tracker they had installed on their blog, which registered a hit from a user at Simmons University in Boston. This piqued Ursula's interest, because while digging through Isra's blog looking for inconsistencies, Ursula found that Isra was friends with a girl named Alex, blogging under the username Lesbian Eclipse. Lesbian Eclipse had a linked Instagram, and that Instagram had a linked Twitter, both of which showed that Alex was a white college student attending Simmons University. Ursula had their suspect. Now, it was time for the interrogation. I deleted it out of concern for her safety, as I misunderstood the tone of your original message. I guess I could give you her email? She might also have a WeChat. This is Alex, isn't it? She deleted it while I was talking to you right now, as I opened a tab to check something and refreshed it and it was gone. Yeah, I use that main blog for my side blog since I never made a main blog. It's actually my roommate's. I'm confused here, what? My roommate and I used to have a Star Wars blog together, and I created this side blog on it a while ago. I kinda lost interest in the original, so now it's just her personal. I wanted to transfer this blog to another main blog for me, but I wasn't able to figure out how to do that in the interface, so we just share a login. Your college roommate is Alex, and you use that blog as a side blog, but it links to her Instagram, and the bio talks about Alex 
but she hasn't used it in forever because she's lost interest. Am I misunderstanding something here? Yeah, she obviously edited the theme and content when it became her personal instead of our Star Wars blog. I'm confused. It's not our joint blog anymore, that's just where the original source of how it was created. We both have side blogs associated with the main URL, does that help? So rather than spending three minutes figuring out the interface, or making a new side blog to pick up the username, you share a Tumblr login with your college roommate, who you presumably met less than a month ago, and she just out of the blue privated her Instagram. Alex, seriously? Okay, I'm not interested in public callouts. I truly am not. Please just go apologize to the people you hurt. I told her to because she just came in the room. I'm getting worried that she might become involved in this. Alex, come on. My college roommate and I have known each other for several years. It's okay to say it out loud. You'll feel better. We've all done stupid shit on the internet. You're 18. This doesn't have to define you. Your college roommate privated her Instagram just as your friend who was totally asleep deleted her Tumblr. Those are some gorgeous coincidences there. I have access to Isra's account because I've been babysitting her Tumblr for several months and I literally just told my roommate to private her Instagram. She is sitting across from me on her bed. I don't know what I can do to help you. I obviously cannot speak at all to Isra's life story besides what I know to be true, but I can tell you that my name is Naj and my roommate Alex and I are sitting in our dorm at a college on the East Coast. I can send you a picture of us, I can give you our phone numbers. I would really like to clarify this situation because I think you are making some assumptions that are not true based on the strangeness of how my roommate and I use Tumblr. I'm truly trying to be nice about this, but I do not believe that Isra magically woke up at 2am to delete her Tumblr just as I had opened it in a tab, and I don't believe that Alex suddenly privated her Instagram because you told her to. I don't believe that an 18 year old on Tumblr would share a login with a friend. Not just because that's fucking weird, but because that's not how multiple logins on multiple devices and apps work. I don't want your phone number. I want you to tell me the truth. One question. Just one question. Was the HIV Living blog run under false pretenses? I did not create the HIV Living blog, but I do know that Isra is HIV positive and she created the blog to educate other people. It was not created under false pretenses. While I can't speak to Isra's life story besides this, I can tell you that Alex and I literally do share a main blog. She is only on Tumblr very occasionally to look at pretty pictures. I would hate for her to be dragged into something like this. That does not explain why Isra's blog was deleted. I already said that I deleted it. I have been the sole accessor of her blog for several months now just to check on her messages on the HIV blog. You told me Isra was deleting her social media. She was planning to, which is why I didn't feel at all bad about doing it myself. So you access the HIV Living blog, the Blue Sky Sapphic blog, and this blog through the same chain. You met her on an international study at your junior year of college, but Alex is 18. You share a password with Alex, and you got access to Isra's blog, which she gave you the password for because she was planning to delete it but couldn't be bothered to hit the delete button in more than a month she hadn't posted there. If you were a co-mod of the HIV Living blog, you wouldn't have needed her password. The messages would have gone to your inbox. One, I was never a co-mod of HIV Living, I think. She just gave me her password so I wouldn't have to out my status to my roommate. Two, I met her during my junior year of high school, not college. Allo Lesbian says you're congenitally HIV positive. Oh shit. If you logged in through an account that's shared with your roommate to get to Alla Lesbian, she would have known. Can you just stop this now? Can you please just fucking stop this? One more time, third time's the charm. Did the people who ran HIV Living do so under false pretenses? I want to explain everything, but I need you to promise that it stays between us. Do you know how many people you've hurt? Do you grasp the scale of this? Explain a fucking way. Like I said, I don't do callouts. After a long period of silence, Naj then provided a new story. She claimed that her name wasn't really Naj, but that Alex and Isra were real people. Alex was her college sweetmate who she met in high school. Isra was a friend of Alex who now lived in India. 
Alex had confided heavily in Naj, telling her all about her and Isra's lives. Both were HIV positive. They had met in an international program for gifted students and kept in touch through Skype since then. Naj had been impersonating both of them with multiple Tumblr accounts, embellishing details here and there, because she just thought their lives were fascinating. Though she did assert that Isra really did have serious medical debt, and that $50 she collected from Cash.me did in fact go to Isra. Ursula, one might imagine, was less than convinced. After a bit of back and forth about a receipt for the donation, Naj said she'd be deleting all her tumblers shortly to put an end to all of this, to which Ursula replied, No, you are fucking not. You need to post a big fat apology on HIV living now. You don't have to dox your fucking self. All you have to do is make a post saying, I am not HIV positive and no one involved in this blog was. I apologize. I will draft one immediately. I will also apologize on this blog, Allo Lesbian. Fucking tell Alex what you have done to her and fucking tell Isra. Can you please also assure me that the real Alex and the real Isra will not be harmed slash doxxed by my awful, awful behavior? Why the fuck would I dox them if Alex really isn't you? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. They've suffered enough by me using them like this. You can email that cash.me receipt to me via your email address to and you can fucking go apologize to people, not just Alex and Isra, and you still haven't answered one question. Why did you do this? I guess I just found their lives so interested compared to mine that I wanted to be involved. I know that is awful, but it is the truth. It's not because you wanted 600 kudos on AO3? You're right. Ursula then spent some time trying to get the receipt for the money transfer out of Naj, which Naj responded to by repeatedly begging them not to dox her, Alex, or Isra. Ursula was getting tired of running in circles. Okay, kid. There are enough lies. Confessing to one more won't make a difference to me. You don't have to send me the receipt link. It would be great if you could get some sort of proof that the money did indeed go to Isra, but, well, deep breath. I cannot hurt you other than making you upset. I'm not going to touch your life at all. Just let me know. Are you Alex? I am not Alex, I swear to you. I know you have no reason to believe me because I spent three hours lying my ass off to you, but Alex is one of the only people who has ever reached out to me and been consistently nice to me, and I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if she was implicated in this. Go make the posts. Don't delete them. Please. I'm going to sign the notes as Naj, even though it's not my real name. I just don't want Isra or Alex to be persecuted online because of me. Is that okay? I just want people to understand that I gravely broke their trust and that I'm sorry. Don't sign them as Naj. Jesus. Okay, I will not. It's posted on HIV Living. I misrepresented myself? Please don't weasel words it. I lied about having HIV. I'm sorry, I fixed it. Don't thank people, Christ, don't deflect. You did not just lie about your HIV status. Please fix that. Okay, how is it now? I'm sorry. I am not a trafficking survivor, and I don't live in India. I am not married. Like, these are also, you know, important. Again, I don't think you grasp the importance of all these intersecting identities when it comes to presenting yourself as a voice for HIV education. Did you delete your AO3? Girl. Yeah, I told you that. Please point out that you lied about other identities and keep the damn posts up and then apologize to your friends. Apologize to the people you hurt. Apologize to the people you hurt with fandom. Post in the goddamn Hamilton tag if you need to. And then go to therapy. I'll tag my HIV living post with Hamilton. Ursula's interrogation continued for hours. Ursula demanded answers, and Naj provided half-truths before eventually relenting with the full information. Naj begged and pleaded with Ursula not to dox her, and Ursula repeated over and over that they had no interest in doing that. Naj swore to the high heavens that she would go to therapy, and Ursula told her that it was more important that she apologize to everyone she hurt and stop deleting pages, which must have been extremely frustrating for Ursula when Naj replied that she had told Alex about the situation, who then freaked out because she was afraid, quote, she's not going to get into grad school, prompting Naj to suggest a complicated scheme of deleting and remaking her blogs to theoretically hide the evidence better. Don't you dare. 
what is your name, and you need to post that receipt. And you need to refund the person who donated. Alex deleted her Facebook. I told you to delete your Facebook to wait for this to calm down if you were afraid of being doxxed. One of the other Hamilton dumpster fire infamy trolls follows Alex on Twitter. Stop lying about this. It will not make it better. I literally just spoke to her about this situation. What did you expect her to do? Why are you so reluctant to tell me your name, but you're keen to assure me that Alex is actually HIV positive? I don't know why I expect anything from you, but lying. I cannot trust anything you say. Do you not understand that? Her identity is more at risk than my own. I used her identities to create the main blog, including her social. She's 18 goddamn years old. This will be gone in a year. If you don't tell me who you are, then of course everyone will think it's her. They have no other option. They have no other option but to think that it's her. Do you not understand that? Ursula continued their probing, asking over and over again for Naj's real name and for the receipt for the donation. Naj wouldn't give in. She was scared that she would be doxxed and her life would be ruined. After much reassurance from Ursula, Naj sent the receipt from her college email, just as Ursula had requested. Ursula, presumably, did a quick Google search to find someone at Simmons with a name matching that email address. First, Ursula forwarded Naj a faculty profile page for a Simmons professor. Is this you? No, OMG, we just have the same name. Is your Facebook still active? No, I disabled it for seven days. I don't have an Instagram, except for one that I manage for a club that I'm in. What's the club? It's called- Ursula redacted the club name from that chat transcript, but apparently it was a racial justice slash diversity club. Ursula replied to this with a link to a LinkedIn profile, again, presumably with a name matching the college email they'd received the receipt from. Is this you? Please tell me why you're asking, I'm starting to get scared. Because, I hate to break it to you, Alex. Ursula forwarded a screen grab of Alex's Twitter account. The profile picture was the same girl from the LinkedIn page. But that's you. Fix yourself, girl. Fix your damn self. I keep backpedaling. Please don't hurt me or dox me. Please, please, please. I'm going to be better. I have to be better than this. I just googled what it is. Girl, tender your resignation immediately. I'm done with this. I'm done with you. Please don't dox me. I'm not going to. Go the fuck to sleep. Alex's messages got even more desperate from here. She had gone past begging for forgiveness and was now into full-on groveling. Ursula had only contempt to offer in reply. Please, I know you don't owe me anything, but I don't know what to do. I can take an audio recording of my therapy tomorrow and send it to you. I'm going to tell her everything, and I've printed out parts of this conversation and the original blog stuff. I fucked up so bad, and I need to make it right, but I'm not going to be able to do anything if I'm totally paralyzed. Please. I am not responsible for your absolution. That is up to the people you so grievously harmed. You're right, I need to make the amends on my own and accept that I won't probably find a lot of forgiveness. But I am so scared. Can we put this on a temporary stay on everything until the morning Eastern Standard Time? Go to sleep. I can't believe your primary concern was that you couldn't get into grad school. I mean, I can believe that, but... After thoroughly accosting Alex for the idea of recording her therapy session and sending it to Ursula as proof that she was trying to improve, Ursula eventually got Alex to give up the truth, that there was never anyone named Isra, and the whole thing was a lie. Alex forwarded Ursula some more contact info for people she had lied to, and Ursula said their goodbyes. Thanks. Now I am going to try to sleep for a hot minute, and you could do whatever the hell. No problem. I'm gonna sleep too. What do you mean I can do whatever I want? I am not here to give you absolution. I am not the arbiter of morals. I am merely a tired, tired person, sickened by what you did. Stop fucking lying. And don't try to excuse yourself. And I will be checking in on your victims. Good night. The next morning, Tumblr awoke to the apology post on HIV Living, which was, indeed, tagged Hamilton, as well as a call-out post on Ursula's blog entitled What Happened with HIV Living, in which they laid out the broad strokes of what they had discovered in the long conversation with Alex the night before. In short, 1. Naj didn't exist. 2. Isra didn't exist. 3. The roommate with congenital HIV didn't exist. Four, the person she claimed to have based Isra on didn't exist. 
five, the catfisher behind this is an 18-year-old white American university student named Alex. She started the Blue Sky Sapphic Illusionista persona in what I believe was her senior year of high school, when she was either 16 or 17. She created this persona to excuse an HIV-themed Hamilton fic she wrote. She gained her credibility as a person living with HIV AIDS via Hamilton fandom. She started her deceptions in Hamilton fandom, and because she maintained this persona to attack writers in Hamilton fandom, for ostensibly justice-related but completely spurious reasons. And when I say attack, she and her friends harassed other people, made them recount their sexual abuse in public, threatened them with doxing, etc. These posts blew up almost immediately. Despite relatively few people keeping tabs on the GCOC's long-running drama, the concept of an HIV-centric Hamilton fanfic, or even better, a white girl faking being a Chinese-Pakistani bisexual bi-gender person with HIV in order to somehow justify her writing an HIV-centric Hamilton fanfic, struck many people as uniquely absurd in a way that only Tumblr can deliver. Compounding the sideshow appeal of this drama, a popular Tumblr user, who we shall call Jane, became fascinated with the HIV living situation and was informed by some friends that Ursula was, quote, also a freak in their own right, but just less of a freak than aloe lesbian. Specifically, people who had been tracking the Hamilton dumpster fire informed them that Ursula had written fanfic in which Alexander Hamilton was a cannibalistic mermaid, sending Jane on a quest to dig up the fic in question. Upon posting what they thought was the offending fic, Jane was quickly informed by another user that this was a completely different author, who just so happened to have also written Cannibal Mermaid Hamilton fanfic, and that the fic Ursula had written was A, long since deleted, and B, actually about Lin-Manuel Miranda being a cannibalistic mermaid, not Alexander Hamilton. This led Jane to a conclusion that would quickly become the popular narrative surrounding the HIV living drama, that, quote, Digoxin's expose of Allo Lesbian is an extension of them getting back at Allo Lesbian and her friends for turbo-cyberbullying them into deleting that cannibal mermaid Hamilton fanfiction about Lin-Manuel Miranda. Now, at first, this narrative sounds like a very real possibility. After all, the GCOC had repeatedly harassed authors in the fandom for writing fic with content they disapproved of, especially RPF, and Ursula had previously made a callout for a prominent GCOC member, theoretically putting them on the group's hit list. Thing is... It's false. No way. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. While Ursula did admit to writing Cannibal Mermaid Lin-Manuel Miranda fic, that fic was archive-locked from the beginning. The GCOC couldn't have bullied them into deleting the fic because it was never publicly available to begin with. Thus, the information Jane received appears to have been misinformation, likely generated through rumors spread throughout the Hamilton fandom. This checks out, as no one was ever able to procure Ursula's Cannibal Mermaid fic, and there is no record of a callout post for Ursula ever being made. Unfortunately, that isn't the narrative the rest of Tumblr received. The HIV living incident became the subject of a great deal of memeing, and quickly entered Tumblr's collective memory as one of the website's wildest scandals, but there was a darker side to this drama being extended to the website at large. First, as many users pointed out, Alex did some very serious harm with her catfishing. She had taken donations on the pretenses of paying for medical bills she didn't have. She had doxxed and blackmailed multiple authors while using her false identities as a shield. And she had given advice to people living with HIV while pretending to be HIV positive herself. One could easily make the argument that despite the absurdity of the situation, this was no laughing matter. Secondly, Ursula was not exactly rewarded for their hard-boiled detective work. Upon the news breaking of Ursula's past writing Cannibal Mermaid Hamilton fanfic, fic which they would later describe as quote, intentionally dumb garbage, Ursula was hit with a torrent of harassment and death threats, forcing them to delete their blog, their AO3, and exit the fandom. While the misinformation had already become widespread, and their pleas fell upon deaf ears, Ursula insisted to the very end that despite what Jane quote-unquote discovered, they did not expose Alex out of revenge. As Ursula themselves said in one of their last comments on the subject, I exposed a person who spent several years harassing people in Hamilton fandom, while scamming money pretending to be HIV positive. 
Idiots decided that the problem was that I wrote bizarre-ass Hamilton fic and assumed I exposed this person because of fandom beef and not because she pretended to be HIV positive to steal money and also tried to get several people to kill themselves. Multiple idiots started going after me to the point where my Tumblr inbox started filling up with death threats. I deleted everything in an attempt to reroute the conversation, but of course that didn't happen, and for some reason I'm the bad guy in the situation. Not the rich bitch, race faking, and HIV faking on the internet for money and social gain. I'm glad what I wrote helped you, but the fix are not coming back ever again. Sorry. While the legend of HIV living lives on to this day in the hearts and minds of Tumblr users, the blogs involved with this scandal did not. Alex, as mentioned earlier, deleted all her accounts almost immediately after she was found out. There are some whisperings of her possibly getting kicked out of Simmons, and a failed attempt she made to start over in the Star Wars fandom, but nothing that's been properly corroborated. She may have given up on blogging for good, she may be in some other fandom, race-faking to this day. Considering how paranoid she was about being doxxed, we'll probably never know for sure. The rest of the GCOC has either deleted their blogs entirely or moved on to other fandoms. To the surprise of no one, there were some hints of a couple users from that group getting involved with drama elsewhere, but nothing particularly noteworthy. As for Ursula, they're mostly keeping quiet nowadays, which, considering how their attempts to bring justice to those hurt by Alex ended, is probably the smart thing to do. In the end, after all the back and forth, the warring factions, and the extensive call-out posts, no one really came out on top in this drama. All the fics have been deleted, the blogs abandoned, the broad consensus among Tumblr users seemed to be that everyone involved was a clown for even writing Hamilton fanfic in the first place. Nothing was left but a desolate field with the stench of ruin in the air. The HIV living scandal was a war with no winners. Only thousands of losers gawking at the carnage.